All right, Gallery's GAD39 airbrush has outperformed my expectations, which is fantastic because I purchased this on my own um, based on kind of being nudged by some friends on my Patreon that said, hey, you really should try this airbrush out. You know, I've been talking about, I need to get another one, a really good general use type airbrush. And this one has a 0.35 and a 0.5 setup in the box, which is, which is great for $45. Um, so part one and part two really walk through that process there and then in part three what I wanted to showcase here was I need to put a little bit of love into the paint before we get to the next level and if that's something you're really interested in chipping in, in chemical conversations and high-end paint finishes please do consider the patreon which link is in the description down below because that's where we talk about that almost on the daily that all said the gas 67 is looking pretty sexy um, and I decided I want to put on some old civilian colors on top of it. So I grabbed kind of an off-white and a baby blue color here with the Mission Models paints. I've got an iPhone vine and Arcadian blue, uh, and I mix up a batch of each for those purposes. And this is just general airbrushing 101 because these tests here specifically are about how I personally paint and weather as a professional you know, on a regular basis and how this tool performs doing it. So that's the kind of the, the way I'm trying to film this out for you in terms of kind of what I do in the live streams, what I talk about in the books and so on and so forth. So that all said, I grab the brush and then of course I adjust everything to where I'm gonna need for this type of painting that I'm doing. So scale model painting, military type painting, you know, weathered projects in particular require a little bit of a different setup. So I tend to go a little bit lighter on my PSI a little bit thinner paint coat and build up my color slowly. Uh, and that's what I want to see if this airbrush was capable of doing with the 0.35 needle in this setup here for the paint. Uh, everything has been, you know, obviously performing super nicely. So if you want to get one of your own, there is a 15% discount code down in the description below, including links to all the Amazon US stores. While I do a color swap between the white and the blue, also know that the international, as I mentioned in part two, um, those of you outside of the US, you're going to have your own Amazon EU slash UK store soon and Gallery's own website uh, will be operational come September for ordering internationally and stuff. On top of which, a couple of questions came up in part one and two about you know warranties and parts and stuff like this. So yes, it's a one year warranty uh, and there is a customer service which is 24 seven and also all the, all the airbrushes that they sell, you get a, a full part replacement uh, setup for. So that's pretty nice uh, to allay some of the skepticism and or questions you might have about buying an overseas product. So that said, getting back to the to spraying the paint, which is the heart of this whole conversation is, as you can see here, there's no overspray, there's no splatters, there's no spitting. It hasn't not hiccup up once. This is about hour three into the conversation of running it through its paces. I primed, I painted, I painted, I painted, I painted, um, all on the fly right after I opened the box. So that itself says a lot about the quality of the, of the airbrush because oftentimes you'll run into problems almost immediately if it's not gonna be a, a good painter. So. I'm super happy with that. And of course, I'm really happy with kind of how I'm in control of spraying the opacity, uh, how, I'm, how thin I'm spraying. Uh, those are the things I'm kind of paying attention to. You know, my trigger pulls, my finger showing fatigue, uh, the weight of the airbrush and, and the balance of it. So when I move it around, cause I do move it around quite a bit to kind of get the various looks that I'm trying to achieve, especially on a smaller item like this, you know, it's not a, a, a large surface item. So these things are really important to me to kind of see how it works. And I'm, again, overly impressed. I, I recommend it 100%. And as I said in the previous videos, every scale modeler and planet Earth should be getting a GAD 39. But coach says you got to do your chores. And this is also muy importante. And that is you have to clean and, and don't skip on that. Don't, don't, you know, put it aside like Rinaldi has done on the live stream uh, a few times. So make sure that when you're done spraying, give it a good thorough cleaning. That's just, you know, general just kind of advice to keep your tools in nice working order. Because I'd say probably one of the more important things is, is if you finish a session, you step away and then you come back, you know, the next day or the a week after or whatever, and this doesn't work right, then that's when it becomes really frustrating. So cleaning is a vital part of the process. But thank you guys for hanging in for, for a three-part series on this. Um, it has my full recommendations. I'm excited about where we're going to take this. Uh, and those of you that are interested in, all the links that you need are in the description down below and Patreon included. So shout out to those guys. Thank you for your support. And we'll see you next time. Uh, I suggest you go grab some. Pretty cool. Link in the description. Thank you. Later. Bye. See you. Okay, I'm out. Peace.